So today we're going to be doing a different style of review. Instead of doing a normal Kashura, I go straight into uh, Simulacrum. So I show off the weapon. As you see, when we hit headshots, we lose our recoil and gain slightly increased fire rate of flying toxin slash puncture and occasionally impact. Obviously, puncture being the highest uh, proc. The weapon overall for the dual toxis has about 37% status, which is its main selling point for using it over some other weapons. And as you see in the Incarnon mode, when you proc it, you apply more toxin and bullets will ricochet across other enemies. So the reason I am swapping this is to try and get a little faster reviews out for y'all. But uh, in these new reviews, you'll see me go over the weapon in the base standard, then we'll go straight into the evolutions and then build reviews. So just as I said, let's go ahead and cover the evolutions to see how you should build the weapon overall. So when it comes to evolutions, when it comes to evolution one, we can ignore it because all it does is unlock the Carnon for us. So we move on to evolution two. With evolution two, we are given uh, Carnage Rain and uh, Fevered Frenzy. When it comes to Carnage Rain, you will gain 60 uh, base damage and plus 33% direct damage per status effect applied to the target. And then Fevered Frenzy on ability cast will give you plus 5% multi shot, stacking up to 20 times, but it gives you a uh, flat 50. So when it comes to Fevered Frenzy, Fevered Frenzy uh, does stack additively with multi shot like uh, the Alvanized uh, Diffusion, Barrel Diffusion, stuff like that, and Lethal Torrent, but it also increases with Transference buildup. So when it comes to Evolution 2, I personally see Evolution, uh, not Evolution, Perk 2, Fevered Frenzy being a lot better than Carnage Rain, which is Perk 1, because while this is like a conditional overload, this applies overall better in my opinion. Moving on to Evolution 3, we are given Ready Retaliation, uh, Evolved Autoloader, and Marksman Hand. So, with these, you get plus 100% reload speed on empty, uh, plus 50% magazine reload per segment holstered, and minus 50% weapon recoil. With these options overall, Perk 1 affects both the Incarnon and the Non-Incarnon, Perk 2 only affects the Non-Incarnon, and then Perk 3 affects both. When it comes to these options, I think Perk 3 overall has a... Oh, well, better effect overall so we're going to be going with marksman's hand but if you needed you could go ready retaliation finally with evolution 4 we are given commodore's fortune neurotoxin and ripper rounds when it comes to these commodore's fortune will give you an increased crit chance at about 20 percent neurotoxin will give you plus 10 percent toxin for three seconds on a headshot and then ripper rounds will give you plus three punch through for seven seconds on a kill with all these options affecting both modes of the gun at like all times, the options are very good. Uh, very good. The only one I would say is not that good is Neurotoxin purely because of a origin trait it has. So pick Commodore's Fortune or Ripper Rounds just to fit your playstyle. But for my playstyle, I'll be picking Commodore's Fortune. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cover the builds. And like I said, this right here is why I do not think Neurotoxin is a good option because Frenzy is built into the gun. So. Let's go ahead and cover the builds. So overall, when it comes to the builds, there are a lot of options. There are a multitude of options. I've seen gas builds. I've seen just pure toxin builds. I've seen pure heat builds. Well, I say pure heat, but a mixture of heat builds. But for me, I've given two. We have magnetic toxin and corrosive. We're first going to cover magnetic toxin, something I will state. This is the thing that can easily get replaced. Take it off, replace uh, dual toxist, uh, my ribbon with, if you like it, Use galvanized crosshairs otherwise you can live with just prime pistol gambit or go with obviously creeping bullseye for the uh increase in crit chance for some reason there you, go. you can just go with this one for the higher crit chance so when it comes to this magnetic toxin build the whole point of this build is obviously to deal with the corpus with utmost of ease and to be honest with you i've already kind of killed a lot of them but as you see even in non-incarnate it does it well and then in the incarnate it does it even better obviously this is without any of the stacks so let me real quickly farm that up so let's go ahead and fight the corpus again but this time with maxed out uh fabric frenzy so as you see we have a lot more uh pellets coming out so once we get our headshots you see the stats are quite nice and obviously since i'm scoped in a lot galvanized crosshairs if you obviously don't have a ribbon will be a good replacement so next up just shoot Well, I'd say that's quite good. And the reason we have Magnetic is in case anything that has a shield that just doesn't die after getting uh, Bounce killed, it will rip the shield off if it doesn't die afterwards. So next up, let's go ahead and cover the Corrosive build, shall we? So next up, we have our Corrosive build. When it comes to the Corrosive build, as you see, I now actually have Galvanized Shot on this build compared to this one where I don't, purely because there are enough of these, uh, well, there, I didn't really need it that much. 
the 6060 here got it high enough and I preferred having prime convulsion over another 6060. When it comes to the corrosive, we will only be running prime convulsion. We have galvanized diffusion, galvanized shot, seeker, lethal torp, prime pistol gambit, target cracker, and my riven. Once again, you could easily replace this riven for uh, galvanized crosshairs. And if you really wanted, right here, you could put in a pistol and a mutation, steady hands, or basically anything you want. I see a lot of people run lethal momentum. So, how does this uh, go up against well, armored enemies? Well, once you get a nice and easy headshot, obviously you're going to be getting kills. And since we still have times 20, see it does still slaughter. So what about the Incarnon? Well, I, I think you can see that it kind of just shreds. <laughs> Basically, the corrosive build for this weapon is quite nice. You just need to get a headshot and in the end you will have uh, corrosive on top of toxin. Hence why I'm not running both mods, since I know this weapon in its Incarnon form bounces when you get shots, so it always goes for... always. Most of the time, we'll go for the head. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up my build to show you what would happen if you mix this with Mirage, and then we'll go into uh, Steel Path. So, I'm going to keep this nice, short, and sweet. So, what happens when you mix this Mirage at times 20 feathered and while having your well, duplicates? Well... Obviously, the normal is still going to be the normal, but once you pop the Incarnon, well, it's kind of a... It's kind of just a mess. And bring it on. So, I went ahead and went with Armored Enemies, so we can show off, well, basically how it feels against... Kind of a mixture of both in the, uh, in the Void, because there are some enemies here with shields, there's some enemies here with armor. So, obviously, if you don't get a headshot, the weapon is a little slow, but obviously, once you get the headshot... And proc the Incarno, you can just kind of hold left click and watch them all kind of explode. And I noticed I forgot to mention why I go with secondary deadhead. When it comes to secondary deadhead, the advantage of using it over Merciless or like really any of the other ones, like Toxin, I think is one of them, I don't remember. Uh, is purely because when you're in the Incarnon, your shots will bounce, so you have a higher likelihood of your shot bouncing and hitting um, the head, meaning deadhead will keep procking meaning it's basically an infinite cycle of free crit damage and bulk damage overall. But obviously, none of this is required, and once again, you can obviously just swap out uh, my Riven for Galvanized Crosshairs, because Galvanized Crosshairs is, if not, if you scope in a lot better than any Riven you could possibly get, for crit chance at least. But obviously, uh, these guys are pretty easy to kill, so I'll be back whenever the Acolyte actually is spawned, because I think that's going to give more of a challenge than basically anything else here can actually give me. So, I'll see y'all then. So, we finally got ourselves a uh, Acolyte to spawn. Ah, we got angst. And we had angst. This thing is so dumb. It's so fun to use. So overall, how do I feel about the dual toxicist and Karnon and well the weapon in general? Well, if I had to be honest with you, it's easily one of my favorite weapons ever. I remember using the dual toxicist when they came out with Anaros, and I loved them then, and I still love them now. Their stats may not be the best overall, it was primarily a status weapon, just got lucky with crit. But when it comes to how you build the weapon, it's very dependent on how you see it. Usually how I would see it is, oh, I need to build purely status, and then I realize, well, I don't have to. The weapon allows you to build crit, allows you to build status, allows you to do a mixture. It's all up to what you see fit for the weapon. And, like I said, this right here basically means you don't have to run uh, an Exilus mod like City Hands for weapon recoil. On top of that, the Incarn on Evolution 3 makes it where you basically have no weapon recoil at all. And since you get Ricochet, the ricochet usually goes for heads, is what I've noticed, so slap on deadhead, get the free bonus damage. But, obviously, build as you see fit. These builds are never the uh, peak option, they're never the best option. So, obviously, I hope this build guide does help you in the end. Do expect a weapon you've heard me say I would never do a review on soon. But, other than that, hope you guys find use in these guides. If you want to see any more like this, tell me what guns you want to see in the comments below. And make sure you guys like and subscribe because I do enjoy making these videos for y'all. Other than that, peace out everybody. See you later.